Take your Bibles and turn to Mark chapter 8, verse 14 through 21. And uh, tonight's message comes from verse 21, the title. Verse 21 says, And he said unto them, How is it that you do not understand? And I, I, I just believe there are times that the Lord looks down upon us and says, Y'all just don't get it. Why can't you understand what I'm trying to tell you? Why can't you understand what I, what I want you to do or how I want you to be? And that's kind of the way he was with his disciples. He looked at them and said, how be it? I just don't understand how you, why you all don't understand. Look in verses 14 through 21. Now the disciples had forgotten to take bread. Neither had they in the ship with them more than one loaf. Now that's important right there. Remember that, that the disciples had forgotten to take bread. And he charged them, saying, Take heed, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the leaven of Herod. And they reasoned among themselves, saying, It is because we have no bread. And when Jesus knew it, he saith unto them, Why reason ye, because ye have no bread? Perceive ye not, neither understand. Have your heart yet hardened? Having eyes see ye not? And having ears hear ye not? And do ye not remember? When I break the five loaves among five thousand, how many baskets full of fragments took ye up? And they said unto him, Twelve. And when the seven baskets among four thousand, how many baskets full of fragments took ye up? And they said, Seven. And he said unto them, How is it that ye do not understand? Father, give us wisdom tonight. Give us an understanding. May, may your Holy Spirit enlighten our minds tonight and speak to our hearts that we might see the truths that you have for us tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, I didn't read verses 1 through 8, but if you had started reading in verse number 1 through verse number 8, uh, Jesus has taken seven loaves of bread and a few small fishes, and he has fed 4,000 people. When you come to verse number 8, the disciples collect the leftovers and... It amounts to seven baskets full. And then in verses 11 and 12, the Pharisees come and they began to attack Jesus. They had seen the miracle that he had just done, and now they come to him and, and they're clearly rejecting him, and they're saying to him, you know, we demand that you perform some kind of miracle in heaven to prove to us that you're really the Messiah. Well, in verse number 13, Jesus refuses to, to play the game that the Pharisees are playing. And he just kind of leaves them standing there. They said, we want a, a miracle from you. We demand that you show us that you really are the Messiah. You know what Jesus does? He gets in a boat with his disciples and they sail away, leaving all those standing there on the, on the shore. Well, now that kind of brings us up to verse 14 where we are tonight. Here's Jesus and his disciples, and they're on a boat sailing across the Sea of Galilee. Scribes and the Pharisees had already demanded that he show them a miracle to prove who he really was. Now here's the disciples in the boat with Jesus going across the Sea of Galilee, and you know what's on their mind? Bread. They're hungry. Because it says in verse 14, Now the disciples had forgotten to take bread, neither had they in the ship with them more than one loaf. There they are in the boat, and they've got food on their mind. And they realize that they had forgotten to bring any bread for themselves. Can you imagine what's going on in their minds? Here they are in the ship, and they start looking at one another and says, Can you believe that? We had seven huge baskets full of bread, and we didn't even bring any. And here we are now out in the middle of the Sea of Galilee, and we're hungry, and we don't even have enough bread to feed even one of us. Now, Jesus knows what's in their heart. He knows what they're thinking. He knows their thoughts. And in these verses, Jesus is going to help them to understand that they're not as smart as they think they are, that they're not as big as they think they are. 
that they've got some room to grow as disciples. Folks, listen. These verses tonight also speak to you and me because there are times when we began to think a little bit more highly of ourselves than we ought to think of ourselves. And we think our walk with the Lord is better than somebody else's walk with the Lord. And the Bible sometimes has a way of cutting us down to size, doesn't it? The Lord has a way of putting us where we need to be. And that's what these verses of Scripture are designed to do. You see, we're just like the disciples. Sometimes we just don't get it. Sometimes the Lord just wants to shake us and say, Don't you understand? Look in verse 15. And he charged them, saying, This is after they are worried about where they're going to eat, where they're going to get the bread to eat. Jesus says in verse 15, He charged them, saying, Take heed. Beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the leaven of Herod. Now they're worried about bread, and Jesus says, You need to beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and Herod. Now, leaven is another word for yeast. And if you add yeast to dough, what's it do? It makes it rise. My kids found that out the hard way one time. Somebody had made us a loaf of bread when we were down at New Midway. And they'd also given us some bread that they had just added the yeast to. And we put it in a car, and it was hot as it could be. There was a pulpit committee come that morning, and they wanted to know if they could talk to us for a few minutes after church. Well, here they've got me and Bobby Carroll back in the back room talking to us. Church people are standing over here wondering what we're going to say to the pulpit committee. Pulpit committee is going to say to us, our kids are sitting out in a hot car eating the loaf of bread that somebody had brought to them. But that lump of dough that they brought us in that hot car just began to grow and grow and grow. You see, yeast will lie dormant for many months. And then when that yeast gets a little bit of moisture to it, it comes to life, and it begins to work. And if you add yeast to, to the dough, that yeast will conf completely fill that lump of dough until it's just taking it over. And the only thing that can stop the leaven is heat when it gets hot. When, le when yeast is exposed to a fire or to uh, the heat, it dies. In the Bible, leaven is a picture of sin, evil, and wickedness. The Bible says that you and I as believers are to purge out, therefore, the old leaven, that ye may be a new lump, so to speak, as ye are unleavened. We are to lay aside evil and spiritual corruption and we're to live for the Lord. We become a, a brand new creation. We are also warned that a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. What that means is, is that a little sin is like yeast in the dough or leaven in the dough. When we tolerate sin in our lives, it will soon get into every part of our life. And it will affect every part of our life. And Jesus is warning his disciples about the leaven or the evil influence of the Pharisees and of King Herod. What is the leaven of the Pharisees? The leaven of the Pharisees is found in Luke chapter 12, verse number 1. It says, Beware ye of the leaven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. The Pharisees we're religious men. And remember, it's not about religion. It's about Jesus. But they were more about religion. And their religion was just on the outside. Their religion was just an external religion. It didn't change their hearts. The Pharisees claimed to have a love for the Lord, but they were nothing but religious fakes. They were nothing more than religious phonies. And when they began to infiltrate the lives of people around them when they began to, to have things to do with the people around them just like leaven in, a, in dough, 
they corrupted everybody they came in contact with. They corrupted the lives of everybody that they touched. In Matthew 23, 15, Jesus said, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye compass sea and land to make one proselyte. And when he is made, ye claim him twofold more than the child of hell than yourselves. <coughs> Jesus is warning his disciples, and he's warning you and me tonight of the danger of having a hypocritical heart. And folks, that's something that everybody struggles with from time to time. Every one of us are masters of pretending what we're not. Sometimes we pretend to wear, wear our hearts, that our hearts are where they ought to be in relationship with God. We pretend that everything is right with God, everything's all right with God, that we're pleasing God. And Jesus is warning every one of us tonight against hypocrisy in our hearts. We need to be sure that what we claim to be as we pass through this life is real because of the leaven of hypocrisy. If you and I claim to be something we're not and we're friends with somebody else, we can poison their lives and we can affect their lives. What is the leaven of Herod? In Matthew 16, 6, Jesus calls it the leaven of the Sadducees. The Pharisees were the religious conservatives of that day. I heard a preacher preach on it the other day, and he said the Sadducees were the Republican and the Pharisees were the Democrat. That's, that's probably not true. They didn't have that back then. But back in those days, the Sadducees, or, or the, the Pharisees were the religious conservatives, and the Sadducees were the religious liberals. The Sadducees were those who were worldly, and they were secular. And they joined forces with King Herod, and they began to compromise with the Romans living around them. And the leaven that infiltrated their lives and teaching was materialism. And as that materialism got into their lives and worldliness got into their lives, it compromised them, and it made them different. And Jesus is warning his disciples. He said, don't get caught up in materialism. Don't get caught up in wanting the things of the world. He said, if you have a quest for more of the world's goods and more of the world's favor, you'll get out of touch with God. You need to want more of God than you want more of the world. The Lord's will back then and right now is that his people be separate from the world. We're supposed to be a peculiar people. As far as sin is concerned, we're to be a separate people. It says, Wherefore come ye out from the world, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. As far as material things are concerned, folks, we are to seek our treasure in heaven. We are to be laying up our treasure in heaven and not in this world. Jesus is simply saying that regardless of whichever age you live in, whether it was when the disciples were living or whether it's the day that we're living, we need to be aware of hypocrisy, we need to be aware of worldliness, and we need to be aware of compromising with the world. Let me tell you something, there's a lot of Christians, a lot of churches compromising with the world tonight. There are a lot of churches tonight that change their whole schedule that they go about on Sunday night. You know, for what reason? A football game. Isn't that compromising with the world? Isn't that having a little bit of hypocrisy? Folks, listen, more important things in the world than a football game. And if Jesus, I heard somebody say the other day, if I die before the Super Bowl, the first question I'm going to ask when I get to heaven is, who is going to win the Super Bowl? Let me tell you something. When I get to heaven, I'm not going to care who's even been the Super Bowl. I'm not going to care who won the Super Bowl. I'm not going to care what kind of ads they have on the Super Bowl. I'm not going to care anything. Folks, listen, we are not to compromise with the world. He tells us that if we allow just a little bit of worldly things to exist in our lives, 
Before long, it's like that yeast in the dough. It will affect every part of our life until it changes us in the way the world wants us to be. Then look in verse 16. Now he talks about the leaven. Remember, they're hungry. They're worried about the bread. And he just told them that take heed of the leaven of the Pharisees and Herod. And you know what the disciples are thinking about? Verse 16 says, And they reasoned among themselves, saying, Is it because we don't have any bread? Is he talking about the leaven because we don't have any bread? The disciples hear the warning of Jesus, and they immediately misunderstand what he's talking about. They're, they don't even have a clue of what he's trying to say to them. They are so focused on the world. They are so focused on filling their stomachs that they can't see the spiritual side of what Jesus is trying to say. And folks, there's so sometimes that you and I are so focused on the world that we can't see the spiritual side of anything either. They hear the Lord's word and immediately they start saying, what in the world is he talking about? And he isn't talking about real bread here, folks. He's merely using the leaven to speak to his disciples as a metaphor, as a symbol of, symbol of evil. And they are so thick-headed that they can't grasp what the Lord is trying to tell them. I wonder sometimes if we're so thick-headed we can't understand what the Lord's trying to reveal to us. The, the disciples just didn't get it. They were so focused on the material that they failed to see the spiritual work of what God was doing in their midst. Folks, God's doing something in our midst right now. And we might be so focused on the world that we can't see it. He might be speaking to your heart right now. He might be trying to reveal something to you right now. And you're sitting there thinking, well, it's been going for 20 minutes. Wonder what the score is. I wonder if we'll get home before the first quarter or so. And the Lord's trying to do something in your midst, but you're so concentrated on the world that you can't get what God's trying to say to you. Folks, listen, we miss out on so much that God wants us to enjoy because we just don't get it sometimes. And we need to pray that God will help us to look beyond the material and see the spiritual. We need to grow so that we'll not be so spiritual blind to the things that God's trying to say to us. Now look in verses 17 through 21. And when Jesus knew it, he knew what they were, what was going on. He said, Why reason ye because ye have no bread? Perceive ye not, neither understand. Have your heart yet hardened? Having eyes, see it not. And having ears, hear it not, and do you not remember? When I break the five loaves among five thousand, how many baskets full of fragments took you up? They said twelve. And when the seven among four thousand, how many baskets full of fragments took you up? And they said seven. And he said unto them, How is it you don't understand? Jesus started out in verse 15 trying to warn the disciples about the evils of the Pharisees and the Herodians. He's trying to get them to see how it's wrong to let materialism and worldliness creep into your lives. And they totally missed out on the message. They're focused on physical bread when Jesus is trying to teach them a spiritual truth. They're worried about bread to eat when they had just one loaf among them. And Jesus says, don't you know that I can take that one loaf and I can feed all of you and you can even have stuff left over? Don't you understand? No, they didn't understand because Jesus said you just don't get it. And Jesus questions them about their memories. He says, didn't you see me feed those 5,000? Didn't you see me feed the 4,000? Didn't you hear the words 
of the response of the people after I fed them? Have you forgotten my mighty power? Are your hearts so hard that they can't be penetrated by the things that you have seen with your own eyes? And then Jesus asked them specifically, he says, how many baskets of fragments were left over in the two feeding miracles? And they answered that they were 12 in the first and seven in the second. And you know what the Lord's point is here? He says, you all forgotten who you're dealing with. Y'all have forgotten who you're in the boat with. Here you're worried about having one loaf of bread. Don't you remember what I just did with a few loaves of bread and a few fish? Don't you remember how many people were fed? And don't you remember how much was left over? The Pharisees had seen the miracles of Jesus, but it wasn't enough to convince them of his true identity. They kept wanting him to do more and more and more. Apparently, the very same thing was true of his disciples. The disciples had been with Jesus long enough and had seen enough miracles at the hand of Jesus to convince even the hardest of hearts. Yet they refused to believe what they had seen. They failed to understand that Jesus Christ was and is God in the flesh. They were in the boat with God himself. Folks, listen, the Lord has done so much for us. But when the next crisis comes along and we have a crisis of faith, how do you react? In fear? Do you wonder how you're going to get through it? You say, oh, Lord, you've really given me a mountain this time. And God says, don't you remember what I just did for you? Don't you remember what I just brought you through? Don't you remember how I've helped you? Folks, remembering what the Lord has done for you is the first step. What Jesus is really trying to teach his disciples is that it isn't what you have or it isn't what you can do that matters in your life. What really matters in your life is who you know and who you're walking with. And if you know Jesus and you're walking with Jesus, you don't have to worry about the bread. You don't have to worry about tomorrow. Folks, let me ask you something tonight. Who's in your boat with you tonight? If you're in the boat with the world, you're in trouble. But if Jesus is in your boat tonight, you don't have to worry about where the bread's going to come. He's going to take the little that you have and He's going to make a lot out of it. If you are a child of God tonight, the best thing you can ever, ever do is to wholly learn to trust Jesus Christ without any reservations because, folks, He'll never fail you. Never fail you. Jesus doesn't want us to live our lives focused on earthly things. He didn't want us to worry about food. He doesn't want us to worry about our health. He doesn't want us to worry at all. He wants us to understand that our lack of bread is not our real problem. Our real problem is that we do not see and hear the things of God. The real problem is a serious lack of faith when it comes to putting our trust in God. The heart of the issue in this message is not the leaven of the Pharisees and the Herodians. The real issue is the lack of faith among the people of God. Folks, we see and we hear what God is doing, but we don't comprehend it. We see and we hear the things of God. We read His Word, and sometimes we don't even believe it. Folks, We have experienced the power of God in a mighty, mighty way. But a lot of times we're still not convinced He can take care of tomorrow. You know what God's challenging us in this passage of Scripture to do? He's challenging us. Hey, folks, you know what you need to do? You need to just slow down a minute. You just need to stop. And you need to remember what I've already done in your life. What I've already done for you. What I've already brought you through. And if you'll remember all the things that I've done for you, it'll increase your faith in me. 
It'll make your faith stronger in me. He's calling you to purge the leaven out of your bodies, to get that hypocrisy out of your bodies, to get that worldliness out of your bodies so Jesus can have more place in your life. Let me ask you something. How many of you are going to break your neck tonight to get home to watch the ball game? I know you're not going to raise your hand. You, would, you wouldn't raise your hand even if you were going to do it tonight. But I want to thank you tonight, folks, for being here tonight. Because what this says is that you care more about God. And you care more and more about His church. And you care more about your brothers and sisters in Christ than you do about the things that are going on in the world. I'm so glad tonight that I've got a God in heaven and I've got a Savior tonight who loves me so much I don't have to worry about what I'm going to have to eat tomorrow. I don't have to worry about anything that's going to happen tomorrow because I know God's going to take care of everything. Isn't that wonderful? And if, if you're like me, you're still going to worry. I still worry about a lot of things. I worry about my kids. I worry about my grandkids. I still worry about things, but I keep it all in here. And sometimes God has to say to me, why are you worrying about those things? I'm going to take care of everything in a way that I want to take care of things. And your worry is not going to change things one bit. Everything's going to happen just the way it's going to happen. I'm in control of all things. You just need to let go and let me be God. You just need to trust me to be your God and to take care of you. It's hard to do sometimes to let go and let God be in control of all things. But when we do that, God blesses us in a way that is supernatural. It's supernatural. We begin to see things happen in our life that we never thought could happen. And we just stand back and we say, God, what did you just do in my midst? God, you just worked a miracle in my life. Or God, I can't believe you just did that. God, you're an awesome God. Folks, God's always doing something awesome. If we just stand back and take a good hard look at what God's doing. God's at work even tonight. Heavenly Father, thank you tonight that we serve a God who's always at work. <laughs> and I know that there are worries in this place tonight. Disciples were worried about food. They were worried about not having enough to eat. They were worried about the food that they'd left behind. They had forgot that they were in the boat with the Savior who could take a little and make much out of it. If every one of us tonight would just have the faith to put what little we have in the hands of God and say, God, here it is. You take it and you make much out of it. God could use us to do something great and wonderful. He could use us to touch other hearts and other people. Just like the leaven in the bread just goes throughout that whole lump of dough till it just completely infiltrates every drop of it. If you and I would be what God wants us to be, we could be like that leaven in this world. This church could be this leaven in this community. Father, thank you tonight for your goodness, grace, and mercy upon us. Thank you for all that you do for us. And I just pray tonight we just realize that God's in our midst tonight. If there's one here tonight that's lost without Jesus, I pray tonight they'd be saved. For those who need to come unite with our church, I pray they'd come. For those who just need to come and kneel in the altar, I pray you'd come. Father, thank you for the faithfulness of your people to come out on this night. And help us, Father, while we're here, to have ears to hear what the Spirit of God is saying to each one of us. In Jesus' name we pray.